video is to show you guys how to set up a project in PSCAD and I'll use the um, fault transit case that we we talked about in class for an RL circuit so when you bring up my updater what you need to do is you need to click run this will actually allow you to run PSCAD free and then what you'll see is you'll see the startup screen and so if I want to set up a new project what I do is I go into the workspace window here and I can right click on project I can create a new project and in this case right here what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new project with the name RL example and you can go ahead and put this wherever you want to put it in your folder system and so if you go ahead and click OK it'll create a new um, window for you in, in order to start building your own circuit. So when you're putting a circuit together, what you need to do is you need to go into the component library and select the components that you need. And there's a couple different ways you can do something like that. One is to go up to the top and basically have these components show up in the, in the um, I guess up in the top of the window. Um, another way you can do this if you were going to go over to the master window, you could actually see all the different components. And a lot of times I'll actually like to go here and then pull in these components as needed. So you can do this a couple different ways. And the way you do this is you basically would copy these components and then you paste it into the RL example window. And so, for example, um, let's say we wanted to go through and we want to put a resistor into the circuit, then we could right click on here. We can just simply copy. We go back to the RL example page and we uh, copy in like the resistive element. And so you can do this for all the, the various elements that you need. And so I'm just going to go ahead and go back into the master window to get these components here. Um, if I go ahead and select, you can actually use a control C to copy the component. What I'm doing next is I'm putting in the ground elements for the circuit. Then what I can do is I can go over here and I can grab a, a source model. Now, if it's not really showing here at the top, what you can do is you can actually um, expand this out and you see all the different sort of source types that are available in here. And some of these are single phase sources. Some of these are three phase sources here. So let me just go ahead and grab this one down here, you know, copy and paste it on the screen. All right. Then I need to get um, an inductive element so I can basically go back to the um, I can get back to the um, main screen here for the library by double clicking it on master library double left clicking here I can go ahead and I can select an inductor element and paste it in here just control V I need to have a circuit breaker so I can go back into this master library here and um, I can find the breakers So the breakers under breakers and faults. So open this up and uh, grab a circuit breaker. Go ahead and paste this in. Now I want I like to get the orientation so it's actually oriented downward. So what you can do is you can go ahead and you can change the orientation, rotate it left, 
because I want to get the current slowing in the, the right direction in the diagram. And then something else I need to add in here too is I need to add measurements. And so if you go back to the master library, you're, you've actually got some, um, some measurement icons that you can make use of. So the measurement icons are going to be under meters. So I can go ahead and I can jump into this and I can pull out a uh, voltage with respect to ground measurement. And uh, let's go ahead and put this toward the top. And then one more thing that I need to have is I also need to have a current measurement. So I'll go ahead and copy that out, put that to the main diagram. And now what I have is I have all the kind of like the basic elements that I need in order to build this particular circuit right here. If you want to go ahead and enter in values, what you can do is you can double click on the model. And what you can do in this case is you can enter in, you know, the different sort of impedances. So if I want to go ahead and set the internal impedance of the source to some small value, what I can do is I can change this to 0 0.001 ohm. Basically what that'll do is that'll make it negligible as far as working the problem out. And then what I can do here as far as the source impedance type, I can just basically have it be like a resistive um, sort of an input. And then for setting the source voltage, then what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to go ahead and set this particular value to the, be the appropriate source voltage. So this is if this is a 34.5 kV circuit, then what I'm going to want to do is set this to be 34.5 kV divided by the square root of 3. So that's going to correspond to 19.92 kV. So I'm going to go ahead and get this entered in. And the frequency in this case is going to be um, 60 hertz. So if I click OK, you see what this does is it shows that this indeed is being modeled as a, a ideal voltage behind a very, very small impedance. Uh, one thing I can also do here is I can change the value of this inductance. And so I want this inductance to kind of match up to the example we did in class. So this is going to be 0 0.00796 Henry's. Oops. Okay, and then um, just kind of a minor thing, when I copied this from the, the library, it, it gave this uh, circuit breaker the name BRK. Um, I can actually change the naming of this as well. And so I can, if I wanted to, is I can change the circuit breaker name to CB. Um, so I'll go ahead and just do that here. So now I have all the, the elements I need in order to, to build my circuit. So the next thing I, I need to do in this case is I need to connect up everything. And what you would do then is you would put this into, um, you'd use like the wire mode in order to make the connection. And you can actually use a control W command in order to get into wire mode. So you can basically toggle it that way, or you can, you can go back up to this menu at the top to enable the wire mode. And so if I hit control W and put this in the wire mode, then I can draw something from this element. And if I right click there, then I can go ahead and get out of wire mode by hitting control um, W again. There's actually a little piece here I didn't want to have. So let me go ahead and cut this again, and do this one more time. So go into wire mode, um, left click here, right click there, go back out of wire mode again. I'll do the same thing up at the the top where I'll go back into wire mode, left click here, right click, hit control W to go back out of wire mode. And what I can do here just didn't quite connect. So let me just drag this resistor down. Oh, 
what I can do is in order to make this uh, measurement connect I can just simply drag it so it touches the wire so when this compiles it actually checks to see what's connected to what and if there's any sort of non-connected components you're going to get an error message so to connect up the rest of the components I'll go into wire mode um, let me get out of it here it's, it's Go into wire mode, hit control W, left click, right click, go back out of wire mode, go back into wire mode again, left click, right click. And let's just drag it over, make a connection. All right. And go into wire mode, left click, finally go over here um, I'm gonna go to left click here drag down right click we'll make this connection and then finally this last component here go into wire mode left click right click and then jump out and now I've got the the circuit elements all connected up now um, so then once I've got the circuit all connected up together, then what I need to do is I need to set up some um, channels right here. And so I can pull some variables, some measurement variables off this simulation right here and set that to plots. And so what I want to do in this case is I want to drag down some output channels. So I can actually get an output channel from the top. Here's one output channel. Here's a second output channel. I can go ahead and set this first channel up here. So it's going to be something that's going to be capturing the voltage. This other channel right here, I can use this to capture the current. All right, and then what I need to do is I need to have a data label to connect this up to a signal. So I have one data label here for the voltage, another data label right here for the current. So this first data label right here, um, let's link this up to the voltage measurement. So that's labeled EA. So I need that to match up with the voltage measurement on the left. Uh, I've got another current IA I want to set up here. So let's go ahead and do that. All right. And then I need to, to make a wire connection here um, between the data label and the channel. So I'll use control W again. So left click, right click, get out of wire mode, go back into wire mode left click and right click and now I've got these hooked up all right the next thing I need to do is I need some logic for controlling the circuit breaker the circuit breaker is actually modeling the fault so I initially want that circuit breaker open and then that's going to close at a certain time, which is being used to, to model the fault. And so what I'm going to do for the logic, if I go back to the master library, and if I go over to where we have the, um, the blocks for doing the, these blocks for the, um, circuit breakers and faults is going to contain something referred to as time breaker logic and so let's go ahead and copy that and let's put that into our main screen as well and then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to uh, connect this up to a, a data label oops And let's call this uh, signal right here CB. And 
let's go ahead and connect this up using the wire mode. So I hit uh, Control W, make a connection, left click, right click, and go on to out of wire mode. And then what I need to do is I need to go in and double click on this time breaker logic. And I'm, I'm going to have this initially open. So let's go ahead and select that initially open. And then we're just going to have one breaker operation going from open to close. And then the time we're going to have this being closed is going to be 0 0.05 seconds. So this is basically going to be um, three cycles. And this time of the second breaker option doesn't really factor into this right now. So what I can do is I can click OK. And now what we have is we have the, the signals all set up. Now finally, what we need to do to graph is we got to insert a graph pane. All right, so if I click on that and the insert a graph plane right here, I've got that included. And then what I need to do if I want to plot a certain variable, say like the current, I, I, I depress the control key and I drag and drop a, the appropriate output channel to the graph. So if I like say want to look at the current, if I hit the control key, what I can do is I can drag this down to the graph. Oops, I forgot you got to uh, right click the graph pane in order to uh, add an analog overlay graph first. Okay, then let's try this again. Here we go. And now I've got this uh, current set up where it's actually going to plot out on this particular graph. And then finally, if I want to go ahead and set like uh, simulation time steps and things like that, I can right click on the RL example. You can go to project settings and then you can put in the different sort of time settings. And so this case right here for a duration, let's set this to 0 0.2 seconds. For the solution time step, let's just go ahead and set this to 100, um, 100 microseconds. And then there's other things you could set here as well, but this is all we need for this example. And so if I click OK, then we should be ready to roll. And so if I haven't messed up right here, um, you know, we're kind of at the point right now where we can actually go through and we can actually run the simulation. So if I go back to home and um, actually run the project, then um, we should get the results right here. Now you notice that when I got an error message, um, this sort of indicated that something wasn't connected up properly in the simulation right here. And so, you know, if this is sort of be the case, what you can do is you can go back to this lower left-hand corner right here and then see what kind of errors you ran into. So anyway, after doing some um, debugging, what I found out was that instead of having a single-phase circuit breaker in, or I had a, I had a three-phase circuit breaker, so I had to change this back to a single-phase circuit breaker model. Um, something else I did too um, is I went ahead and changed the scaling on here so that would actually would fit the data associated with the um, um, current. So I set Y min and Y max on the plot and I also set um, X min and X max. And then when you now when you run the simulation, then what this will do, is it'll now it'll do the, run the simulation and actually plot out the current. So anyway, um, we'll kind of do different sort of simulations in class, and I'll post these examples up on the Moodle site so you can actually, you know, have at least like baseline circuits to um, work off of for your assignments.